Hi, folks. Welcome back inside Manhattan Basketball. Chris, I'm with the head coach of Manhattan Men's Basketball, Steve Masiello. Uh, coach, there was one thing that I had left out of last week's show when we talked, and it was by design, so I wanted to talk a little bit more about it today. But George Beeman being drafted in the uh, in the NBA D League by the Oklahoma City Blues to have all three players from last year, Mike with in Puerto Rico, Ramel in Israel, all three players playing professional basketball. What kind of feather in the cap is that for this program? That's great. You know, I listen. That, that's we come here. They came here to get their degree, be students, and then play, play this game professionally. Um, and the fact that they're having the opportunity now to make money doing what they love on a daily basis couldn't be happier for them. Uh, George is just a terrific young man who I think is going to have a big impact in that program. I think it's a great fit for him because mm -hmm. he's their type of guy. Um, and you know, they're about the organization and, and promoting from within. So if he does the right thing, which I know he will. Pay his dues, um, grind it out, learn the NBA game. Uh, I spoke to George throughout the process, and I'm really happy and proud of him. So as the team got on the floor for the first time for the fans to see in terms of competition with this exhibition against all you post this past weekend, whistle aside, what was the biggest takeaway you thought from that game? We could win ugly, mm -hmm. which I like. Um, you know, our, our core was there. I think we held them to 40%, 35 in the first half of the field, 26 from three. I was happy with those numbers. We did foul too much. I think we had 25 fouls in the game. Nine of the 25 fouls were were just, I don't want to say dumb, but they were dumb fouls. Mm -hmm. uh, fouling 80 feet away. So we got to correct those right away. Now you get that number down, you know, in, in the mid-teens, and now that really helps your defense a lot. Uh, we have to do a better job. If we're going to play big, mm -hmm. we have to do a better job on the backboard. If you're averaging, you know, 6'6", six, six across, 6'7", six, across, you're starting five, you have to win the backboard by plus 10, plus 15. We didn't do that. We didn't have the right mentality. Um, I thought we did a lot of good things. I thought we did a lot of bad things. Mm -hmm. I thought we scored 78 points, didn't really play well offensively, didn't share the ball overly well, but we still had the ability to put up 78. Conversely, we, we still held them to a low field goal percentage from the field in front of three, but we weren't very good defensively. So we, we got a good, that team's good. Mm -hmm. They're picked second in their league, and I'm not trying to uh, you know say, oh, it was, it was, it's a great win. But they're good. They gave Mammoth, you know, a battle down there at their place in a scrimmage that never took place, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not supposed to know about. Um, so it's a good test for us. I wanted to be tested. We got tested. And now, you know, it's the real the real test coming up. You mentioned the size of this team. And when you're looking at that starting five and Shane Richards at 6'5", is the smallest guy you put on the floor. What are you trying to do with that starting five? Is that just the best five guys on the floor? Is that the size matchup you're trying to go It's really for? just what we have. Rashawn's mm -hmm. out. Tyler... I'm not thrilled with right now, and he knows that. And that's really the best five guys who've been practicing. Uh, really, the only interchangeable one there would be Calvin, um, because he's been practicing real well. But I want to get Zane some reps early at the mm -hmm. four and see how he looked. So it's really the, the lineup I like based off of practice. That'll change multiple times this year uh, as the year goes on. But it's one of those things where you know what I'm looking for. I, you know, I'm just trying to say, okay, this this we can be effective in the zone this way. We can be effective. With you know these guys, we have four guys on the floor that can really shoot the basketball and stretch it. We have the, you know, so I'm looking at what the strengths could be. I know there are weaknesses with it. Our ball pressure might not be as good. Might be not be able to be as good as a pressing team as we've been in the past. Mm -hmm. um, but you're still trying to find all that out, you know. And, and and the thing that we have, and it seems like it's you know, I feel like it's every year. I mean, I remember last year opening week we didn't have Mike and Rashawn, um, you know, going to the Sal game that week in practice. You just, Injuries, so it's tough to really. You know, I want to see Tyler and Rashawn together. I haven't had that opportunity mm -hmm. yet. You know, see how those guys play off each other. I haven't seen that. Um, you know, Carlton's been hampered by things, so it, it's just it's been tough to work around that because we are limited in the backcourt. When you look at a guy like Ashton Pink, and we talked about his maturation process here, this program, 17 points, nine rebounds. What else are you looking for from a guy like AP? Yeah, he should have had like 22 and 15. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's something we've spoken about. But the thing I'm looking for for him is. I want to rebound every three minutes. Um, that's kind of his thing. Um, and, and, if, and if he gets it to 2.75, he'll have a chance to be a first-round pick. We studied the last six drafts, and almost every big taken was averaging a, a rebound under three minutes per game. So that's a big, big statistic for us, which he meant that uh, I think he played 23 minutes and had nine nine rebounds that night. So that's, that's what we're looking for for him. That, that's really... I'm not worried about his offensive game. Mm -hmm. He wants to shoot the 15-footer. I'm fine with that. He's worked on that, but he's got to rebound the basketball. As long as he rebounds the basketball and he continues with good body language the way he has been, uh, he, you know, he has my blessings. I was saying this to a couple of people after the game. I don't think I've ever seen a box score where Shane Richards has eight points and not a single made three-pointer. Yep. What does it say about the growth of his game that he's 
getting more inside. He's being able to maneuver towards the basket. Well, that, well. That, that's just it. You know, I, I think you look at Shane's line, and you, you see normally he doesn't make a three. You don't expect him to score. Mm -hmm. He doesn't make a three. He gets double figures and three assists. Right. And, and I thought probably him or AP were our best team guys that night from an energy culture standpoint. Mm -hmm. Shane was on guys, picking guys up. It didn't affect him one bit that he didn't shoot the ball well that night. Mm -hmm. That that shows me such growth. That shows me maturation by a player. So I'm really happy about that, and that's that's what I'm looking for. Of the new guys who folks had a chance to look at for the first time, I think Jermaine Lawrence and explosive is the first word that comes to mind for at least myself. I, watching him in practice and watching him a little bit. But what did you see from him? That, that's people who don't know the game. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I thought he was horrible. Mm -hmm. I hated him. Um, you can't play. 20 plus minutes, 18 minutes, and have two rebounds and mm -hmm. six nine and be the athlete he is. I, I don't. You guys worry about offense. You guys get. You like that stuff. You see the ball <laughs> go in. You cheer and that. And I, I say that lovingly. You, right. you, you guys, you know the game. Um, and the fans do. But for this team to be who we have to be, mm -hmm. I know Jermaine Lawrence could score. I know Shane Richards could score. I know Ash Peggy could score. I know Emmy could score. I, every guy on this team could score, with the exception of maybe one guy. Every guy on this team could score. But can you, and, I, and I've said this, this can't change. This is the difference between being a very good player or being a dominant player. The reason George Beamer was dominant, because when you do get stopped from scoring like Quinnipiac did, he still goes and gets yeah. you nine rebounds. He still gets you four steals. So you have to have multi-dimensions to your game. You know, it, 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 it's like when you take all these girls out. You can't just always <laughs> take them to the same restaurant, right? you yeah, got to have a variety yeah, of yep. things you can do. Yep. It's the same thing. So I told you, man, I said, man, you can't play these type of minutes. I said, that was great in the first half. You shot the ball, but what if you didn't? What mm -hmm. if every time you put up the foot, you saw double downs and they were rotating at you? you got to go get yourself six points in transition, six points off offensive rebounds. Go get your eight rebounds. Now you're becoming a multi-rounded player. He was one-dimensional that night. That's easy to stop. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't happy with him. I was much more happy with other guys, like a Shane Richards, who the three got taken away, mm -hmm. but did a variety of other things. Zane Waterman came in five rebounds, just toughness. That's what I like. Jaspers defeat LIU Post in their exhibition. Make sure you check back later this week. We're going to preview Florida State, and the season begins in just a couple of days for Manhattan men's basketball. We'll check back later this week inside Manhattan Basketball.